Welcome back, everybody. It is the second to last night of Championship Week video notebooks. Day number 12 here. Uh, two days of Championship Week left. I'm your host, Chad Sherwood. That's David Griggs. That's John Salika. Griggs, what the hell are we here for tonight? Uh, I don't know, but it's it's very, very late. Very, very late. Uh, it's, uh, yeah. We're, well, we're, it was a busy day. It got off to a slow start, but God, it picked up in the night. Just another crazy day. We're going to get to it all. Semi- everything, lots yes. of semifinals, a few quarterfinals. If you did not yeah. watch any games, everything you don't you have to. to. Right, we're, we're right here. You. Yeah. Uh, let's start off with, uh, let's figure out where the screen share is. If anyone can figure out what the screen share is, we can get the show going. Okay. Okay. Going to pull up the screen share here. And uh, first of all, we do want to confirm that David Griggs is still locked in the puppet bunker. Uh, you can let me out now. There's only second two of all, days left. Second is going to give us an update on what our Hoops HD mock selection committee did today. All you, Stalika. All right. Uh, for starters here, we basically began the process by voting in uh, four more teams. And then we... Colorado also, State, TCU, St. John's, and Mississippi State were those teams. Yeah, a little hard to tell from that screen, but basically at that point we began to uh, seed the field here, so we added the lines one through six. So what we would do each step of the way is we would uh, nominate 12 teams and then take the top teams one through 12 and then vote, like rank them one through 12, and then we ended up getting two lines at a time so in yeah, this case, a little, little modification we do from what the real selection committee does to speed up yeah. the process a bit because seating is very te- tedious yeah and the other thing is that this is set in wet concrete it's not necessarily set in stone a lot of the teams you see there are still playing they could move up they could move down there is a process called scrubbing where you can make changes and last thing we did, we voted two more teams in at the very end of the night. Florida Atlantic and Seen Hall are in, correct, Salika? Uh, yes. It only took four rounds of voting, but we finally managed to get uh, Florida Atlantic into our field. And <sighs> Seton Hall, they didn't have to wait quite that long, as at least in terms of rounds of voting goes. Yep. Yeah. So we'll be continuing tomorrow. We, we know that we need at least one more team. We couldn't even need as many as five more teams in the field to complete it. Uh, we will be voting those final spots in, including our contingency teams, and we'll have an initial seed list by the time we do our show tomorrow night. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can figure out what button to hit here now. Back to the puppet bunker. Griggs, Woo. you're going to give us a recap of what the actual selection committee did today. The real NCAA tournament one, correct? Yeah, was, yeah. so we were really busy. We were watching all the games. You all don't really have to. But, uh, you, you know, recapping the real committee today, uh, started off early this morning. All the committee members met, met for breakfast. A really, you know, delicious sounding breakfast. A lot better than the food I'm getting here in the puppet bunker. But shrimp omelets this morning, Chad. I hope uh, no one has a seafood committee. allergy. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> that would be a problem. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Maybe they just, but shrimp and cheap. But there was a problem. It's like some of the committee members thought that there was just an in, unequal distribution of shrimp. Some people had more shrimp in their omelets than another. And you might recall yesterday, there there was a problem at breakfast yesterday. So th- this was a big deal. A meeting at 10 o'clock, they were going to have a meeting to review the nomination board, maybe vote some teams in, maybe have the discussions. That meeting was canceled uh, so they could address the issues that they're having at breakfast. They instead had a Zoom call to President Charlie Baker and, you know, to continue the problem or to continue to address the problems. After that, it was decided a long lunch was in order. So from 12.15 to 3, they had lunch. But they did get to their ice cream social that, that afternoon. And then, I it, see here, I mean, they did do some work here. At 5.15, they met to check the scores from the afternoon games and discuss the seedings. But the meeting was, oh, this meeting was also canceled. My mistake. Because yes. they decided uh, they needed a nap before dinner. <laughs> I, I don't blame them. I need a nap right now. And then again, another seafood dinner was served. Like you, you know, there's right. a lot of seafood. There was yeah, surf and turf yeah. yesterday, shrimp for breakfast, seafood dinner. Yeah. How about right. a steak tomorrow night? I mean, this, this yeah, might be a yeah. problem. Yeah, I know. I mean, this could be another problem. They might need to rope Charlie Baker in. And then they did have their evening ice cream <laughs> social at ten o'clock, right after dinner. And then you see there, uh, they, they from ten o five to ten o eight p.m. tonight. They used their phones to check the Hoops HD survival board, and that's when they got down the business. They voted 
the same teams in, I believe, that uh, you saw on our board. Yes, the one we'll show yeah. at the end of the show, show here. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, but big problems with breakfast. Hopefully, <laughs> breakfast tomorrow goes better. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just hate that they're having such a rough time. I mean, we work so hard to make it easy, and they're just having all kinds of issues with breakfast. <laughs> well, let's get to some real games that were played today. Uh, let's start things off with the Big East. Uh, no, let's start things off in the ACC, uh, yeah. because that's what button I clicked here. Uh, Stalika, let me bring you back in here. North Carolina got a bit of a game from uh, f- from Pitt, but did find a way to win. But then the one of the best games of the night was the NC State-Virginia game. The best endings, uh, at least. Yeah. Teams like Pittsburgh and Virginia are going to be sweating bullets now because NC State is now the first team in ACC history to get to play uh, five games in five days. And remember, these teams played a couple weeks ago at uh, the Dean Dome where NC State had played one decent half before Carolina eventually opened things up. But as far as the game between NC State and Virginia, it took a three-pointer from O'Connell at the buzzer just to – extend the game into overtime for the wolf pack and they were eventually able to pull away from the cavaliers yeah that sets up greg's a potential bid thief because nc state not an awful profile but we do not believe they have any shot at getting in if they lose this game tomorrow they they Uh, really but but they take somebody else's bid if they win this game against against the tar heels yeah, they do. And, um, y- y- you know, it's been an improbable run. It started off with a really unimpressive win over Louisville, and they just kept going. <laughs> and they've knocked off Syracuse, Duke, Virginia, and North Carolina. Uh, not only well, they, they, not, they, well, they haven't knocked, knocked them off. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on. Don't give yeah. that one away yet. <laughs> if they do knock off North Carolina, is this one of the more improbable runs, at least in terms of brand names, that uh, any team's ever had in this tournament? Uh, it, 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 this has been a Louisville, been a, Syracuse, Duke, Virginia, North Carolina. That's a pretty good run. Yeah, and it all came down to a three pointer at the buzzer that that forced the game into overtime. When we thought for Virginia, absolutely horrible free throw thirty again, free yeah. throw shooting again. They had a one and one at the end of the game. Just make one of them, and it's over. They couldn't, and that's what let let NC State tie the game and force overtime. So. Uh, I, if if Virginia does not make the tournament, they can blame their free throw shooting completely. Yes. <laughs> Big East. It was semifinal day in the Big East. And uh, I don't know where my notes are on the Big East, but Griggs, why don't you tell us a little bit about what happened? Um, uh, Connecticut in, in the Johnnies, it was, I, I don't want to say it was a cakewalk, but at no point, at least from about the second, the start of the second half on, did it feel like UConn was not in control? Uh, St. John's got close a couple times, made some good runs. Marquette was blowing Providence off the court, and the Friars made a few runs to get back in it, but again, opened it up at the end. Outside of Creighton, who lost early to Providence, uh, I, I do think that for the most part, these are the two best teams that we've seen this year, at least in terms of profile and uh I, I want to say it's going to be an exciting final, but part of as good as Marquette is, and they are good. If you saw where we had them on the seed list, I, I think UConn rolls. <laughs> they're just it, they're ridiculous. Go ahead, Stalika. This was also the second game in a row that Tyler Kolick did not play for uh, Marquette right here. I suspect they'll probably hold him out for one more night just to get him ready for the NCAA tournament. However, Marquette is showing they can they, they can win games of significance without him in the lineup and as far as Providence go ahead and say as far as Providence based on how things have been playing one win might be enough although I have a feeling they're also going to be sweating even more bullets come selection Sunday and at this point I'm prepared to say probably going to miss the cut that's a my my thought too, and just back back to UConn some some amazing stat lines Cam Spencer 20 points and nine assists uh Tristan Newton, 25 points and nine assists. Two players with nine assists. Uh, just missing double doubles, both on the with the assists there, uh, not not the rebounds. Uh, but uh, I, I think you got rolls tomorrow as well. Uh, it was semifinal day in the Big 12 conference, and if we can get this button to work here, Salika, uh, we saw uh, Houston do Houston things again, and Iowa State kind of uh, not much not much trouble with Baylor really. I would say with Houston doing Houston things, they're making a last second push here to uh, go for the number one overall seed. And if they're able to uh, do another same blasting against Iowa State, 
I probably would entertain a motion to put the Cougars number one overall when we do our meeting tomorrow night. Yeah, uh, uh, Chad, can you pull up profiles or is it just yes. brackets? Yes, yeah, I can. Let, let's look at the Houston profile. And one of the things that I've – oh, that's not them yet. Okay, uh, it's there coming. You. Okay, better. you might notice a few wins in Tier 1. Um, just a few. Yeah, but when you look at the point differ, I mean, they, they blew out. They, they've just been blowing teams out. You know, they won at Baylor. They The 82-59 win against Texas Tech, it just seems like in their recent games, from about mid-February on, has anybody really given them a close game? Uh, the only one I can think of is they, they had a game at the end of the regular season at UCF that was close for about – you see, yeah. actually, lead for most of the first half and into the second, but even that one, they won by eight points. So, uh, no, the answer pretty much is no. No one has given them a close. Yeah, game. and when you look at their losses, uh, they have three. One was by three points, and one was by one point. I, this is just a team that on the court looks amazing. And how do you score against them? Yeah, nobody can. I think if anybody in the history of college basketball could pitch a shutout, it's them. Uh, Houston, Iowa State tomorrow. Uh, I don't think Iowa State. I think Iowa State is a great team. Yes, I think they Houston, are. I used to think Houston could win this game by 15 points easily. Yeah, I think Houston could win an NBA playoff series. It's getting to that <laughs> point. <laughs> it was the Pac-12 semifinal day, and wow. Let's start with this this first game here, Griggs, where Arizona looked like they were in control against Oregon. And yes. Completely, they were up 14 in the second half, completely came unhinged, and Oregon – kept their season alive, moving on to the Pac-12 chip, last ever Pac-12 championship game. Yeah, the last ever telecast, I didn't realize it as it was happening, but the last ever at least men's basketball telecast on the Pac-12 network, unless very, very strange things happen in the meantime. Um, a, a curtain call for the conference tomorrow, Oregon, Colorado, and it's a big game. Um, let's talk about not just the game, but what does it mean on paper in terms of selection? We have not selected either team yet. Um, For our, our mock committee is not there. I kind of frankly do not agree with our mock committee. I think Colorado is there, win or lose. Uh, yeah, the, but the win the night was bit, really good. Yeah, but an Oregon win steals steals a bid from somebody, just like an NC State win. And we can see bids. We can see. We're seeing the field starting to shrink as we're seeing bid thieves. Yeah. We've already seen the A-10 locked in for one. We might have one in the ACC. We, we might have one in the Pac-12. Uh, yeah. These are bids that that would have that people were counting on going to some of these bubble teams that they're not going to get, and that's why teams like Virginia are going to be sweating. Yeah. And I should also and point out there was one leftover bid that we left remaining after we finished our deliberations for tonight. Uh -huh. But as um, Chad pointed out, not many spots are opening up compared to years past. Yeah. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But uh, again, uh, Oregon, Colorado, Slika, I think Colorado does win this game. I, I think this is it for Oregon tomorrow. But it wouldn't completely shock me if, if the Ducks won. That would probably be the feeling just because Colorado has more of the momentum. However, Oregon also going to be riding a high coming off of the Arizona win and suddenly get a another lease on life after having spent a few years outside of the NCAA tournament. So definitely a sense of urgency for the ducks going into this one. Uh, let's jump over to the skip ahead here a little bit to the big West conference. We'll come back to the mountain West in a few moments. We're actually recording this before that game is over. So we'll get that in a minute, but in the big West. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Griggs, we saw uh, first of all, uh, I guess the, the upset. I mean, Long Beach yeah. goes and knocks off uh, UC Irvine in, 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 a, in a close game all the way, but but they found a way. Yeah. Uh, we figured this would be a tough game and a, and a good game because of the rivalry. Um, you, you know, the black and blue, one of the bigger under the radar rivalries, actually. Um, UC Irvine had a great year. You, you kind of hate to see that what was probably the best team in the conference and the one that was best built to compete and maybe win a game in the round of 64 will not be going there. But at the same time, a lot of credit to long beach. Uh, you know, they looked really good in the quarterfinal game. This in, in they showed up and got it done tonight. And you got to be happy for Dan Monson who 
you, you know, the beach is program, not the best season. They had sort of trailed off in recent years, but here they are with a chance to get back into the NCAA tournament. If they can knock off, um, my, my, if they can knock off yeah. my pick to win the big West, UC Davis had a nice lead on Hawaii. Hawaii yeah. went on a 13, two run in the final moments, cut it down to one, uh, and, and had a shot, at there at the end that just would not go in. Uh, so somehow UC Davis survives the, the huge run late by Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, Salika, Davis, Long Beach tomorrow. What do you think? I think it's probably going to be a UC Davis for the first time in about eight or nine years. Although it would be hilarious to see that Dan Munson supposedly being on the hot seat, if he ends up winning the auto bid, it might be around for a few more years to follow. Yeah, Dan Monson, a good coach, a fairly respectable career. Something about this game tomorrow, uh, both these coaches, um, Dan Monson and Jim Les, have played in, have coached in Sweet 16s with under the radar teams. You might remember Jim Les at Bradley. Dan Monson coached what was an under the radar team at the time out of the West Coast Conference, known as who was it? I forget. That would be Gonzaga. That would um, be Gonzaga. Lead, lead eight run. <laughs> Conference USA. It was semifinal day, and let's talk a little bit about the, about the UTEP Miners because in their quarterfinal round game, they ended the game on a twenty-four to three run to to huge comeback to steal the game from Liberty. Uh, they went on a Sam Houston had a fourteen point lead in the second half on them today. They went they went on a twenty-three to four run and held off one final late Sam Houston charge uh, to do it again, just late. Huge monster runs by UTEP in back-to-back games. Uh, and here is the Miners, who team we've barely discussed all season in the championship game against Western Kentucky, who blew out Middle Tennessee. Uh, Griggs, your thoughts on what happened today and what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, yeah, well, again, is you know you mentioned how improbable it was UTEP UTEP's performances were. Western Kentucky's been blowing through this conference. This was a team that had its moments and had a lot of talent, but I think that our impressions of them throughout the season was that they were underperforming. Well, they haven't been underperforming in this, blowing their rivals out by thirty-one points. Um, it felt like in both games they were up by fifteen when the at the tip. And I, I, I kind of think Western Kentucky, as fun as UTEP has been, uh, I could see them falling down by 20 again tomorrow and not coming back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just got this feeling about UTEP suddenly. And Western Kentucky has been, has had just looks, has all season been look, looks really good, really good, and then just looks awful. Yeah. And this might be the game they just look awful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Salika, in the Metro Atlantic, we saw a thriller between Quinnipiac and St. Peter's. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 and actually a really good game between Fairfield and Maris, too. Your thoughts on what happened today? Well, this was a game that was literally decided at the buzzer right here as the Peacocks knock out top seed Quinnipiac. Not a terrible surprise given that the uh, Bobcats had been fading a bit of late down the stretch in uh, conference play and then Fairfield and Maris, this was another game that probably took 20 minutes to get through the final minute, but Fairfield was able to uh, finish out at the free throw line and they'll move on to the title game. Yeah, and Griggs, uh, you guys both picked Fairfield to win this. I picked Maris to win this event. I was wrong, I'll admit it. Uh, I'm not with you. I, I think Fairfield wins tomorrow. I think so too. Uh, kind of a heartbreaker for Quinnipiac. I've I loved I've liked watching this program improve and and make the uh, you, you know steps forward that they've made. Uh, hopefully, we'll see them in the NCAA tournament eventually. Uh, not this year, though. Not this the, year. The MAC. And yes, oh it is going to happen out of the eight seed. Kent State takes care of Toledo, then beats Bowling Green today. Akron wins a real, real good game behind, uh, against uh, against Ohio. Yeah, behind this, uh, wow. Enrique Freeman had 24 points and 21 rebounds in this game. A uh, great game for him too. Uh, but we've got the wagon wheel tomorrow, Griggs. Yeah, we do. Up in Cleveland, uh, a very unexpected edition of it. It's not the first wagon wheel we've seen in the MAC title game, but I think it's the first one where that involved an eight seed. Uh, at least that I can remember. And Kent State was perhaps a little bit of a uh, like a lot better than what that seed may have indicated. They certainly had some good moments throughout the year. 
I was really big on this Ohio team, as you know, like the last few weeks of the season and then coming into the tournament. I, I just thought that, that that they would roll. And as much as we liked Akron throughout the year, man, did they taper off toward the end of the regular season. But, a, you know, a really good game today. I wasn't overly impressed with their win over a, a, against Miami because Miami just isn't that good. But I, I kind of was today. This was not an easy game to win. They had to come from behind a little bit to do it. Although they, they, were, they were down 10 in the second half. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I think they get it done tomorrow uh, against Kent State, their rivals, and, and win win the wagon wheel and the auto bid that comes with it. Because I didn't realize the the wagon wheel came with an auto bid, but I guess it does, <laughs> it does now. Uh, yeah. Yep, I, I agree with you. I think Akron does beat Kent State. Salika over in the MIAC. Uh how about a pair of upsets today? Yeah, Stalika called both well, these. I think. Well, I called uh, Howard for sure because this was my pick to initially win the tournament right here i'll admit i did not see delaware state coming considering nc central usually has a history of uh either winning the event or at least making it to the championship game two years removed from our centenary award for the worst team in d1 delaware state tomorrow at one o'clock on espn2 has a shot to get in to the ncaa tournament against howard uh this howard game w- w- was was crazy seth towns probably <laughs> the best player on their team I may remember from when he was back at Harvard even a few years ago. Uh, he was leading the way. He had 13 points, which I think was second on the team, and nine rebounds to lead the team. Nine minutes left to go. Howard is down two, and he picks up his fifth foul. He's gone from the game. And Howard then goes out of the run and wins it without their best player yeah. for that last 10 minutes. It was it was wild. Uh, but there we go. We got Howard and Delaware State for the championship. While the Delaware State story would be great, Griggs, I, I think Howard takes it. I, I do, too. Uh, I, I don't want to say that it's going to be a blowout. It's probably going to be a thriller. Most of the games have been. Uh, Griggs, let me stick with you over in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, where we uh, – they both games were a little bit close at times, but they really yeah. weren't that great of games. Uh, yeah, but. I, I, Cookman came back in that game. Uh, they got a little bit closer than 12, but Grambling was just blowing them out of the gym. Grambling Upwards of 20 looked, points. Grambling looked great. Yeah. Texas Southern pulled. So Alabama A&M was close late, but Texas Southern yeah. pulled away. But as always, Johnny Jones' Texas Southern team in the championship game gets a Grambling team looking for their first ever NCAA tournament bid. Uh, what uh, a story uh, that would be if they could get it. Oh, yeah. man a former centenary award winner, like no real history, as you mentioned of, of success in basketball, a first place team this year. And that was quite an accomplishment. And if they can just finish it off tomorrow night, uh, that would be something. Oh, I'd love to see them do it. Uh, I'm going to pick the upset Griggs. I'm going with grambling. <laughs> yeah, <me too>. yeah. <laughs> Texas Southern probably will be favored in that game. <laughs> they always win this thing. Yeah. Uh, Salika. Uh, let's jump back to the Mountain West. We skipped that earlier. I think we have the final scores up. We do. A uh, s- pair of really no contests tonight. <laughs> I don't think it was terribly surprising that uh, San Diego State would uh, have a decent game against Utah State, but I think the more impressive result of the night is New Mexico trying to make their case that, yes, they should be in the field right here. Now beating Boise State and Colorado State, that's going to help give them some uh, tier one wins, but they would best to not leave any doubt and uh, beat San Diego State in the championship game. But a lot easier said than done. As we're seeing bids disappearing, these gate this you know maybe New Mexico had kind of played their way in. If we didn't have bids stolen from the in the ACC and in the Atlantic Ten and in the yeah. essentially the Pac-12, but now we may have all these what we're calling bid thieves. Uh, I agree with him. I think New Mexico has a decent case right now, Griggs. I don't think it's a great case. And obviously, I think they have an incredible case if they beat San Diego State tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, it would, be, it, it would be unprecedented for the committee to leave them out if they beat San Diego State tomorrow. Uh, what do you think? Do you think they can do it? Yeah, I'm not going to pick it, but I, I think it, I don't think it's a guaranteed win for San Diego State at all. San Diego State also looking really good. Um, getting the win against UNLV, who hosted it and who had been playing really well, and just really beating Utah State, a good Utah State team. This afternoon, 
did Stalika allude to this? They were down 17 in this game and then ended up winning by 16. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, great I, will ask what's, I will ask what's harder here. Is it trying to beat San Diego State in a tournament setting, or is it trying to win the back range when barely any games are being played in that tournament? <laughs> yeah. uh, let's uh... – one more conference that was in the semifinal rounds today. It was the WAC. And, yes, we do have the final score up there. Let me say, Greg Canyon, uh, it was a close game against Seattle yeah, most of the was. way. Uh, the, but the, they found a way to win it. Uh, then Tarleton, Texas, uh, we thought Tarleton had it. We thought Grand Canyon was going to, by virtue of Tarleton being ineligible, lock up the automatic bid when Tarleton was up 11 in the second half. Well, Arlington went on a run. And they went on a heck of a run. Yeah. Uh, and it was... Brandon Talbot with five seconds left, just as we were starting the show here, who got the, who won the game for them. Uh, Shamar Wilson had 29 points for the Mavericks, but uh, incredible come from behind win. Buzzer, not quite a buzzer beater, but almost a buzzer beater win. Uh, Greg's and Arlington goes up against Grand Canyon tomorrow in the championship. Yeah, um, and it is good. I think it's good for the conference that the, the championship game is for the auto bid, that it isn't already decided. Uh, the end of this game saw a, a never-ending replay. Um, then the three-point shot in the final seconds. And a then three, a three, well, there's a three-point shot first by another player for, for Arlington. Yeah. Then an and one for, for Tarleton to tie it up again. Then another three-pointer to win it <laughs> yeah. in the final 10 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> something else to watch on this uh, that it, it just made me laugh. Uh, UTA head coach KT Turner, uh, after the game, the sideline reporter goes to interview him and he, she could not get his attention. It was hilarious because he's <laughs> waving to the crowd and jumping up and down and like, uh, yeah, go watch that. That was about as amusing as anything. <laughs> we had three conferences in their quarterfinals still today, starting with the big 10 where uh, Purdue beat Michigan state. Wisconsin over Northwestern, and then in the evening, Illinois over Ohio State and Nebraska over Indiana. Uh, Sleeka, your thoughts on these four games? Ohio State actually led for a decent amount of the game against the Illini before Illinois managed to uh, take the lead right around the four-minute mark and uh, never really relinquished that lead. So at least people are spared a potential bid thief out of the Big Ten here. Indiana basically failed to show up in the nightcap and – if you look at the afternoon games, Purdue doing Purdue things and also Wisconsin starting to stabilize themselves again with a pretty good win against Northwestern. Well, this yeah. game was tied with between Purdue and Michigan State with a minute and yeah. a half left. Uh, so this it was, was a this, good showing by Michigan State. Didn't yeah, it really, yeah. really was. Uh, uh, Northwestern, Boo Booey in the first 10 minutes had 16 points in this game. Uh, the next 10 minutes, he had zero, and he finished with 29 on the game. Uh, so Wisconsin forgot to defend it for the for 10 minutes. Then they woke up, and they won going away here by by nine points. Uh, but uh, Griggs, Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois, Nebraska, we th- I mean, all four teams we, th- we think are solidly in the field at this point. But what do you yeah. think about these two games? I think it's a couple of blowouts, but I'm not going to tell you who I think is going to do the blowing out. You'll have to guess. Oh really? You're that big on Nebraska this year, huh? Yeah, no. I think I think uh, you know, Wisconsin. They had been playing really poorly down the stretch, but they've done well in this tournament. Blew out Maryland. It's the first time they looked good in you know weeks, and then a nice win against Northwestern today. Maybe they can play a good game tomorrow. But Purdue is just on another level, I think. And as good as Nebraska is, I just don't think they can get by Illinois. We talked last night about how the about the how in the A ten in the quarterfinals all four games were upsets. Yeah. We almost saw the same thing happen in the SEC. Three out of four, uh, and the only one that wasn't was the four five game. It began with an absolute stunner: Mississippi State rolling Tennessee. Who uh, we actually voted on the one line despite that tonight. With the, yeah. They might get moved down. Uh, Auburn took care of South Carolina in the one game that was not an upset, and then in the evening games. Uh, a and M, not much trouble with Kentucky and Florida, no trouble with Alabama. Yeah, Kentucky, we're talking about. I'm talking about Kentucky, Alabama, Tennessee, three protected seeds. Yeah, Kentucky competed in their game. It looked like while they didn't always play well, they at least played hard. Tennessee looked like 
they just wanted to get back fr to Knoxville from Nashville, just head across <laughs> I-40 and make sure they were home by dinner. I, it's They just asked for their check and left. <laughs> and uh, I'll let Stalika share his thought because – Go ahead. What what were you, what was your take on this, John? <laughs> Basically, I think they need to paint over the slogan. It just means more because clearly it did not mean shit for Tennessee. <laughs> <and Alabama. laughs> I want to, I want to pull up the cheap sheets again. I want to talk about Texas A and M for a moment here. They picked up the win. They are not yet in our field, although we debate them a lot. And this is one of the wilder profiles I've ever seen, I think, when I look <laughs> at it. Because look at that quad one now. They are six and six against quad one, three tier one A wins. That is as good as anybody in the nation that's even anywhere near the bubble. They should be solidly in the field. They have a very good record against tier two with lots of tier two A wins also. If you just look at the top two tiers, this is a slam dunk. This is probably a six, seven seed, maybe even higher, Griggs. Yeah. But they have five tier three losses, four it, which came at home. And yeah. so it just makes this profile to, to completely teams that are scratchy. bad on the road. I mean, yeah, if you look at those teams' road records, I don't. They're all terrible. <laughs> and, and so part of me says this team is in and they're on the seven line. And part of me says that this team is going to the NIT. Yeah. Uh, and I, I still can't figure it out. Um, I can't either. Every year there's teams that are just hard to evaluate, at least a couple of them. And this year, this is one of them. I, I, I think I will the committee say, will take them. But I will I, I will say if, if they win tomorrow uh, and then lose in the championship game and then get left out uh, for the second time that a, <laughs> in, in, in the last few years, that A&M has made a great run in the SEC tournament and still been left out. Uh, you know, number one, I think yeah. it would suck for them. But number two, I think I'm just going to have to laugh at that point. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. We love Uncle Buzz. We do um, love Uncle but, Buzz. And, but unfortunately, uh, the committee is spending more time on uh, surf and turf and mash reruns. Yeah. Uh, I'll yeah. tell you, if that happens, then this may have actually really been true here. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stalika, what do you think about Mississippi State, Auburn, and AM and Florida tomorrow? I mean, nobody saw these two games coming. <laughs> I mean, strangely, it may have been more of a matchup thing as far as uh, Mississippi State beating Tennessee because that was actually the second time this year. But at the same time, you have to also look at Florida, who had also cruised past Alabama and clearly showing they weren't just a, a home court hero in that one. But they almost but, lost to Georgia the night before. Well, they, they got scared straight. And, <laughs> uh, but I think if you look at the way things are playing out, Auburn also should be concerned that they don't uh, – overlooked Mississippi State and I probably could see Uncle Buzz's team making it to the championship game here for the second time in three years. Uh, I, I could see that also. I, th I think it's going to be Auburn and A&M in the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, one more conference that was in the quarters. It was quarterfinal day in the American. Uh, began uh, Sleeka with South Florida. Not much trouble at all with East Carolina and UAB uh Got a little bit of, of trouble for, from – actually, UAB was down to Wichita State. There, yeah, there was were. an incident here where, where the Rams, for the second day in a row, there was a problem with, with the baskets. They had to go and change them out or get the repairs done. Right after that, UAB went – very shortly after that, UAB went on an 11-0 run to win this game. So uh, maybe clearly, that was a problem all along was the basket was no good. <laughs> right. Clearly, the Rams couldn't handle the greatness that was uh, Tulsa and UAB. Apparently, that's where the American is at right now, but – I think the much greater games were actually in the nightcap where FAU was trailing for a long portion against North Texas before they finally pulled away right after the under eight timeout. And then you look at the nightcap with uh, Temple pulling off yet another upset. This is not a game that FAU can be farting around with. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Vlad Golden, 21 and 10 for FAU. Uh, FAU is a team our our committee just barely put them in tonight. I think yeah. that they're a lot closer to the bubble than people think may think they are because they do have some bad losses on there. Uh, this will be a bad loss to Temple, even though Temple has won three games already in this tournament. Uh, you know, this was a shock here that Temple won this game, uh, so good for them. But FAU, I, I agree, has to win this game. Uh, 
to, to, to yeah. really feel safe. Uh, maybe they're not even fully fully safe, but I think they're in big trouble, Griggs, if they don't beat Temple. Yeah, if they if they win this one, I think they're okay. It, yeah. it, it's more or less a play out with a loss than it is a play in with a win. If they avoid the loss, I, I think they'll stay inside the bubble. What is interesting is like the winner of the other game, I think a case can be made for South Florida. Perhaps a case will be made. I don't think they'll be selected without the auto bid. So the other game is basically an elimination game. It, it basically is like a, I, I, you know, and if South Florida loses this one. I don't think there's any case that can be made at all for them though. So yeah, if they want to make that case, they've got to win and they got to lose Florida Atlantic in the finals. And that keep in was, mind, this is also a team that's already lost to UAB back in January. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a good game, though. Uh, that was it for, for today's games. The Lakey will not be Florida Lambing at a Royal Temple. But that was it for today's games. We are going back to a couple other conferences. Uh, it is Championship Day in the America East to start things off at 11 a.m. Vermont versus UMass Lowell uh, at Vermont. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to say this is the year that Lowell finally breaks through and actually pulls the upset at Vermont Griggs. It, it would really be something if they did. Normally, I would say you're nuts, uh, but, you know, Vermont sidestepped two landmines, uh, barely got by Albany, and then and then had to really sweat out New Hampshire, whereas Lowell, what, you, you know, they've also had their, their struggles, but uh, I, I can't do it. I, I just think Vermont, <laughs> this is a stage that they tend to own, uh, the last time they did lose, though, it was to a team called UBMBC, lo- lost on their court. I mean, you, you in, in, in the com- in the conference tournament, they lost yeah. to UMBC. Yes, yeah, and that team went on to beat Virginia. So, uh, we are also going back to action sleek in the A10. It is semifinal day after they took the day off today, uh, and here's that upside down bracket: St. Joe's <laughs> VCU, the Bonnies, Duquesne. They will uh, only one of these four teams will get in. Uh, so the question is, what do you think about tomorrow's games and who's going to advance to the Sunday's championship? I think it would probably be the chalky thing to see, say, VCU right now. But let's not forget, St. Joe's had a pretty good beginning of the season. If you overlook the AM Commerce loss, this was also a team that had beat Princeton on its home floor. So they have shown they can win games of significance. Did, did, did and- they beat Villanova also? Yeah, there was also a bit of the Holy War, but then again, Villanova, kind of a bubblish team this year. And you look at St. Bonaventure and Duquesne, those teams actually do have a long rivalry going, and St. Bonaventure has had more of a history of making noise in this event. But however, for Duquesne, they they would be going for their first A-10 championship since they won the inaugural Eastern 8 back in 1977. That's the last time they were in the big dance. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Uh, well, okay, Slika, who are your picks up for the two games then? My picks are going to be uh, VCU and St. Bonaventure for the title game. I'm going VCU. I mean, that was my pick to win it, win this tournament before it started. So I'm definitely going VCU. Uh, I want to go. I want to go Duquesne, but I think the bodies do win the game. I'll put it that way. That, that's where I am with it. Uh, I'll be rooting for Duquesne because I just. I, I like the job to keep that Keith Dambrot's been there. I thought they were my preseason pick to win this conference. So, uh, you, you know, I think they sort of, I don't want to say underperform, but uh, I will. That's what they did. But uh, I still like the way the Bonnies have been playing just a little bit more. I think, I think I they just, do it, but... I just hope this game doesn't get interrupted by the DoorDash guy like last year during one of the <laughs> yeah. Duquesne games. Okay. Back in Let's, uh, yeah. <laughs> we have gone and talked about it various times, 31 out of 32 conference tournaments during the course of these video notebooks. There's one we have not discussed yet. It's time it's to a do good it. One. Yeah. It has not started, believe it or not. Last one to start, only, only two rounds in it. Ivy Madness begins tomorrow. Uh, Semi-final day, Princeton Brown, Yale Cornell. I'm going to ask both of you two questions. Number one, what do you see happening tomorrow? And number two, what do you see happening Sunday as well? Who's going to win it? Griggs, why don't you start it off? I think Princeton handles Brown. Yale Cornell is such a toss-up. Um, I, I, I got it. I, I mean, it wouldn't shock me at all if Cornell won it, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Yale and then Princeton to win it. Salika. This might be the most neutral environment we've had with this being played at uh, Columbia's campus and fairly equidistant from just about at least 
three of the schools right here with Brown probably having the uh, longest distance to travel into uh, Manhattan here. However, I'm going to say Princeton probably going to face off against a uh, Yale in the title game. And my guess is Princeton's going to end up repeating. Well, number one, I am not agree with you that Princeton wins. I think Yale wins this event. I think they beat Cornell. And then I think they beat Brown. It's going to shock you all with an upset. This Brown Whoa. team has played great Whoa. lately. Yeah, that they, is Brown beat Yale to end the regular season. Uh, this team has come on strong. They're playing at, as good as either, any of these teams. I don't think this is a three-team battle. I think this is this is a legitimate four-team tournament. And I think Brown does get a win, but Yale in the end of the day. Uh, that's it. Let's go back over here and check in on our survival board. Uh, yeah. this, this is the Hoops HD survival board uh, where we track how many teams are left with a chance to win it all. Uh, yeah. and heading into play today, uh, I think it was a bit of an error last night. It was 116 teams that were still alive heading into play today. As a result of today's games, let's see what happened. Drum roll, please. Down under 199 wow. teams left. And actually, I think it's down to 98 because uh, we had one more fall off uh, in the Big West after we started this game. Uh, well, no, it was... Yeah, you know, you're right. Hawaii yeah, the big fell West. off after we started. So yeah, Hawaii fell off. Uh, should be down to 98, actually, by the time any of you look at this. Uh, 98 teams left. Uh, yeah, and bottles, you see our... 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Uh, yeah, you see our four categories there. The uh, the locks, the under considerations. Yeah. Okay. They have different meanings here now. So the committee, when they do check in for two minutes a year, and they say they want to vote all the blue <laughs> teams in, Yeah. What, those, are, those are the teams that are the locks. Either all in caps that they've won an auto bid like Wagner or Moorhead State, or they're a lock no matter what happens, like in Arizona or Washington State. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that those yeah. teams have lost, they're going to get in anyhow. We tell they them are. that. Yeah. They should not be considered the teams in red like Southern Indiana or Fairleigh yeah, Dickinson. Not at all. Yeah. Because they've been eliminated. Right. They're they've been red. eliminated. Yeah. Uh, there's are there any. Okay. Here. Akron and Kent State are still auto bid only. Uh, they will have to consider one of these teams. That will be decided mm -hmm. tomorrow, and we'll let them know by putting them in blue and all bold. Right. So that's that way the committee will know who won the game. They'll come to this board and see. Yeah. Uh, finally, we have not made up. We have not. We talked about New Mexico a bit. We have not decided. They're not in blue. They're not in red. They're in a strange green color. What does that yeah. mean, Griggs? Well, it, it means maybe they'll be selected and maybe they won't. It, it's going to be up to the committee to do that. And as you saw, they had a little bit of trouble today. Some of the meetings that they were going to have to presumably mm -hmm. talk about the green teams had to be canceled. But, uh, you, you, you know, I'm just kind of. I, 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 I really know. think they should talk tomorrow about changing the procedure and discussing green teams while at the ice cream social. Yeah. I mean, it might have to come to that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> Let's go over here, <laughs> not to the Ivy League, but to our feature here, the top 10 things to see at college basketball games. We've been having tons of fun with this one. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, we had some honorable mentions to start things off, such as the Hornet's Nest Trophy. Yeah. The Kennesaw Banana. Keggy the Keg. And those crooked sidelines up in Bangor, Maine. Yeah. Then we started oh, to our top yeah. 10. Top with 10. The Detroit book oh, guy. Yeah, I love this. Yeah, yeah, these are the best things you can see at college basketball. Rocco Miller. <laughs> I saw he was at two or three games tonight. Yes. Red Panda. Yeah. Great, great halftime show. Right. Second best halftime show. We'll get to the second, best in a moment. Second best halftime show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Caleb and Andre, the Mississippi Valley State Delta Devil <laughs> announcers. Are we here? Yeah. And Andre, that's day! <laughs> They're the best. We're, we're gonna get them on this summer. We're, we're gonna we're gonna find them and get them on the podcast. Saw tons of this today. Refs watching TV. Yes, uh, uh, you can't avoid that. Uh, the dog. Man. Yeah. Oh, that's that's Louisville basketball for you. Yeah, that really is. Uh, how fitting. The number one halftime. The show, number the, one halftime show. The big wow. fl sky floor sweepers. Oh, we yeah. loved it when these guys were on TV every year. Yeah. And yesterday, the giant Conference USA curtain. Yeah. Oh, it, 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 I mean, I, I don't think there's ever been anything like it in the history of sports. <laughs> Let's Oops go. At the star. Yeah. Let's go. 
to the number two thing to see at a college basketball game. Uh, this big suspense on this one here. Yeah. Little drum roll. That thing in Seattle, Griggs. Oh yes, oh. <laughs> the 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 Hawkzilla there. So, uh, you you know you can just see the size of the thing. You can see the measurements of it. Um, what, what is it? It's about 50, 60, 70 feet tall. This is this arena looks small when you watch it on TV. Have you ever seen Seattle's arena, like? You, you know, for home games, it actually seats about 18,000 people. It's just that this thing in Seattle makes it look so small. That's how huge it is. Um, well, it's the we toughest some, ticket in Seattle. Yeah. We, we have some history of this thing because this is not just – this is actually predates the, the building, does it not? Yes, it was. So uh, the Haida people, um, there we are an indigenous tribe in the Pacific Northwest. They were very skilled with woods and metals and tools, and they existed about 14,000 years ago, and that is who constructed this. I, I don't know if it was a, you know, a religious thing or what, but but it's been there for 14,000 years. And, and people, various people make pilgrimages to this. And this is yes. a little known fact. Dr. James Naismith Dr. went to J Seattle to yeah. see this thing. And what happened after he saw it? Well, yeah, he, I mean, it, it's what inspired him to invent the game of basketball <laughs> because he, he was such a visionary. He's like, if I invent this game and they build a campus and an arena around this thing, I mean, it, it would do it its proper justice. So, yeah, it's fourteen thousand years old. It was it, it inspired James Naismith to invent the game of basketball. Uh, I mean, we would not be here right now, but for right. that but, thing in but for Seattle. That thing in Seattle. This, I mean, it, it's about thirteen. It, it's about fourteen thousand years older than the city itself. <laughs> Can't take it. We gotta go to final thoughts, <laughs> Talika. All right. The Big East and Madison Square Garden today have announced an extension of their agreement to host a conference tournament. It's going to go through the year 2032. That will be the 50th consec. Well, um, that's going to exclude the uh, 2020 tournament that got started but ended up getting canceled because of uh, COVID. But generally, it's going to be 50 straight years at the Garden, even though other conferences like the ACC and Big Ten have it made overtures to try to have the occasional conference tournament played there now i know the big 10 did get in one year but they had to move up their conference tournament a week early in order to uh play the palace so to speak yep uh griggs um some there's always every year these uh arguments on either message boards or social media or especially twitter or x or whatever they're calling it today over which conference tournament is the best, which I always find funny because it's just amazing the correlation of fans of Big East teams that say the Big East is the best and fans of ACC teams that say that one's the best. Uh, they're all great in their own way. It's kind of a silly argument. There's only one conference tournament that's the best, and that's the Northeast Conference. I thought you were going to say the Great West. The Great West no, is the best great. one that ever was. It's not with us anymore. The best conference tournament ever was the 2011 Great West tournament. It wasn't even for an auto bid. And if you don't believe me, go look it up. It was the best one ever. Uh, <laughs> I want to throw a little final thought of my own here. I normally don't, but uh, I want to spend a couple seconds just discussing the NIT <laughs> and, Ole, and the Ole Miss Rebels. Now, where the hell does all that come from? The NIT now has a procedure where they got rid of the auto bids this year for the conference regular season champions that uh, that failed to win their conference tournament auto bids. And instead, they're giving auto bids to the top two nets from each of the six power conferences, including the SEC, obviously. Ole Miss, I believe, would have fallen into one of those auto bids. If not, definitely would have been in the NIT. Chris Beard came out today and said that they're not going to go to the NIT. Mm-hmm. So you're taking away the bids from the small conferences to give them to the power conferences, teams that don't even want the, f yeah. the bid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to calm down here. I'm not going to do it. But uh, yeah, yeah. So this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Give it. Give the bids back to the small conferences. Give them. Give these bids to teams that want to play it. Don't say let's give a lot of extra bids to power conference teams that don't even want to play. They'd rather end their off season and and allow Chris Beard to go off and take his Aruba vacation or wherever he's going. Uh, yeah. Play in the damn tournament, Chris Beard. 
or give your bid to get to bid to a team like a, you know, to, to a team that won its conference regular season and failed, give it to an Eastern Kentucky, you know, yeah. or a little rock, a little rock, um, or a Toledo, Toledo, uh, yeah. on that well, note, maybe though, not Toledo. Yeah. <laughs> thank, I'll be having David Griggs over there, John Sleet down there. I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow night with our final episode of the championship week video notebook. Talk to you then real soon.